Dame Diana Johnson and Sir Peter Bottomley. Welcome to you both. Good to see you both. And it, the application is on the subject of the government's response to the second interim report of the infected blood inquiry. So, Dame Diana. Thank you very much. Um, and as you know, we've been here a number of times seeking. Um, uh, that uh, you, your granting of a backbench business debate on the issue of infected blood. And just to recap, the infected blood inquiry finished its oral hearings uh, earlier this year. The final report from Sir Brian Langstaff is expected in the autumn. But Sir Brian has taken the very unusual step of producing a, an interim report where he sets out very clearly the direction of travel, which is around the issue of compensation. And I just wanted to read to you the, the list in his uh, interim report. He talks about the need for a compensation scheme to be set up now to begin work this year, compensation schemes to be established before the inquiry makes its final recommendations in, in the autumn, interim compensation payments of £100,000 to be extended to groups that weren't included in the payments that were made at the end of last year, affected family members to be eligible to make their own individual claims, uh, chronic hepatitis B infections to be eligible for compensation, that's for the first time, cut-off date for hepatitis C infection should be removed, and regular ex gratia support payments should be guaranteed for life by legislation. Now, that report was published in the Easter recess. Um, the government are telling members of parliament that they are working at pace to deal with the recommendations from Sir Brian. However, we haven't had an opportunity for members of parliament to debate what Sir Brian said and to actually hear directly from the minister about what the work at pace means. And there is some concern uh, that that work is not as quick as it should be. We know that 500 people have died since the inquiry was set up. We know that one person dies on average every 96 hours. So I think there's a real feeling amongst the all-party group, which Sir Peter and I chair, and members across the House, that this is something that should be debated before the summer recess, and we should at least allow um, people who are waiting to know what the government's response and direction of travel will be some, some comfort. Um, I think we're, we're just concerned that radio silence isn't enough. Peter? I agree with Diana. I didn't think That's you would good. disagree with Diana, but there you go. <laughs> it, it, does, it, 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 it does good to the people for whom we're all concerned. When I say all, all members of Parliament mm. are concerned with this. Uh, I think ministers welcome the chance to speak, and certainly the present minister in the Cabinet Office has come to the Commons to answer questions, but that's not a debate. And I think the people who have been affected by this, those who are affected and infected, want Parliament to be saying to government when, what, how and how soon mm -hmm. a debate will help that. Thank you very much. Questions, colleagues, please. Uh, uh, Diana, you, said, you mentioned at the beginning of your remarks about, obviously, the report coming out in the autumn. I just wonder if there's any other time pressures on having this debate at the moment before the summer recess. Um, well, the, the report came out in the Easter recess, so it's mm. been out for over a month now. He did, I mean, to be fair, it's a very unusual step for a public inquiry chair to make a report on compensation yeah. before he's actually made the report on the findings of the public inquiry. So I, I think it's quite clear what the direction that that report will have in the autumn. Um, I think people are just desperate to know. They've waited a very long time to get the public inquiry. They're waiting till the autumn for those final recommendations, but it, you know, action could be taken now to identify the people who are not included in the payment, uh, the support payment schemes, to start setting up the compensation framework. Because Penny Morden, when she was the Paymaster General, got Sir um, Robert Francis to do a, a, a framework. Uh, analysis of what compensation could look like and Sir Brian's used that a lot in his interim report so uh, you know they've had it for over a year the government really should be in a position to make clear what their proposals are before the end of the year and as Sir Brian says that the compensation scheme should be up and running this year. My, my view chairman is that and so, well, is that by having a, if, if we're granted a debate it makes it far more likely that the government will make a substantive decision and announce it before the summer recess. And I think that's important for those who are serving. 
at the moment, this is a general debate application. Uh, have you not considered having a, 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 a motion that goes along the lines of uh, calls on the government to implement the recommendations of the interim, the, report. interim report? Sorry, are you suggesting we should change the title then to that? Am I'm I suggesting you should have a motion for, for okay. which well, is that's... potentially divisible. Well, I'm very happy to take, take your advice on that, if that's the way to do it. I, I was just thinking we could get the opportunity for a minister to come and explain to us what was going on. I think if, we, if, if my understanding uh, is roughly right, if we had a motion that called on government to announce by the summer recess how they're going to implement what's been recommended by Sir Brian with a timetable, that, I think, would, be, would meet everything. And we can do that through the backbench business. It's not right. binding on the government, but... It's no, of course, but and, it's a motion. And, and, and the thing is, I think it's quite a long time since we, act, since we actually had a division on a backbench business committee um, debate with, with, with a motion. But having said that, you know, if it's passed on the Nord, that is the will of the House from yeah. our perspective. Yeah, so, mm. that's very helpful. Thank you. OK, so, I mean, I mean the, the, the application is live. Yeah. Um, so please, you know, consider the wording of a potential motion. Yeah. Submit it to us. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is a live application. We we haven't any debating slots in um, in uh, the chamber until towards the end of June. But if we could facilitate a, a debate towards the end of June, would I take it you would accept That's that? That's fine. We're, we're very happy. We can do it before the summer recess. Okay. Right. Excellent. In that case, thank you very much. Very much. Um, thank you. We will now go into closed session. Order, order.